sitting here um, not in a position where we thought. We thought we would have two wins. I thought we'd have two wins in there, but we're sitting here at 0-2. Uh, so we're going to give you a little wrap-up of the game, how it happened, why it happened. I'm Terry. This is Paul, Mountaineer Rants. Um, Last week was only on ESPN+. Plus. For those of you that didn't get ESPN+, Plus, we'll give you a quick rundown of the game. But the Mountaineers lost the game 55-42 to in overtime. Uh, on an interception on our possession of the ball in single overtime, which they ran back. That's how uh, they they win in they overtime by twice, more than yeah. seven points. Yeah, yeah we, we started off fast. We got ahead of them 14 nothing. a couple of nice passes. Uh, they kept fighting and kept playing. In fact, if you look at that, we were ahead 14 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. If you go through the rest of the game and the overtime, they outscored us 55-28. to 28. From there on out. So uh, th that's really not a good omen at all. Um, it was a track meet. Yeah. What, what they punted twice. They punted their first possession and then they punted uh, early in the second half. The third quarter, yeah. And, and, uh, and I think we only punted once or twice. But other than that, every they'd get the ball, they'd score, we'd get the ball, we'd score. It was a track meet. It was what I call a pin pinball machine. Mm -hmm. Not the kind of football that that, that uh, Neil Brown, Don Nalen, guys like me want to play. It's certainly not the kind of game I like to watch and the kind of game I, I like to play in. Uh, I'm not a fan of that at all. But I'm if more, you like passing in high-scoring games, that's what we had. Our offense was pretty good. JT Daniels was very good. Uh, Bryce Ford Wheaton was good. Again, we got ahead 14 nothing, and it went 14-7, 21-14, 28-21. But then after that, it, it kind of went Kansas's way. We had our chances near the end. Um, we came down. We jumped off sides, had to kick a field goal instead of scoring a touchdown at one point on a fourth and one. We couldn't go for it on fourth and six. So we, we were down by 11 at that point, fought back to tie the game, and uh, came down, got into overtime, had a stop in the overtime, had a stop. I should say, until uh, somebody made a, uh, a selfish bad play, Taj Austin, and uh, then it gave them a second chance where they scored, and then, then we threw the pick six to finish it. The, the theme of the game was a quarterback for Kansas by the name of Jalen Daniels. Jalen Daniels was very good at running and passing and the option, and we weren't getting much pressure on him because he was quick and he could run. And when somebody got open, he found them and threw it to them. And he was converting third downs at a miraculous pace. So we weren't able to stop him. We didn't stop him all day. A lot of the reasons he was converting those thirds downs is because they were gaining so much yards on first and second down. They didn't have third and long. We never forced them into a third and long. Okay. I would, that's the analysis. You're exactly right. It was in a downpour. It was a yeah. full, mark, a full uh, stadium. Uh, and it was at night, and uh, like I said, it was a track meet. So there were two or three key plays, in my opinion, that turned the game, one of which was when we stopped them early in the second half, forced them to punt, and uh, one of their players went running past our punt receiver, Reece Smith, Reece Smith but didn't touch him, apparently, and Reese Smith muffed the punt and dropped it. They fell on it, they got the ball, and, and scored again. So we went from being up a score with the ball to now it's tied. Right. Uh, and, that, and that was critical. Now, we ended up behind uh, and catching up to tie the game with a two-point conversion in regulation. So we were doing the heroics. We went into overtime, uh, they had the ball, we had them third and long, had them pitch the ball to the side, That's we the sacked their guy deep, and we it would have been fourth and probably 30-some yards plus. It was a little screen pass out to the left that we had two guys out there and tackled him for a loss, but what happened? Now they were going to have to kick they a, field, to a goal field goal for three if they could make it. Or it, or, fourth and about or it would have been fourth and a long to go. But after the ball was thrown in the screen pass, our, our, our end, Taj Alston, 
was called for roughing the passer. At least two steps away from him, no excuse at all. It wasn't even a close call. It was it, no complaints. It was roughing the passer. The ball was gone. They were just standing there and he shoved So him instead down. of holding them to three points or fourth and long, they got a first down. They scored on the next play. Now we have to have a touchdown in order to tie them. And one of our early plays, we throw a curl route to Bryce yeah. Ford Whedon. You're, and you're confusing of, it because I said he's, his defender's he playing should. back off of him. He needs to run a curl. He They checked to an out, and uh, Daniels put it behind him, and the guy jumped it and ran it 80 the, yards. The, the, the defensive back waited, and when Bryce Ford Whedon went to the outside instead of the inside, the defensive back jumped in between the two, clipped the ball, ran it down. Game over. Uh, very sad. We look at the turnovers, you look at the mistakes. In a close game, that's what made the difference. But we were we were bad in other ways. We yeah. didn't play with the intensity that we had with Pitt. Let me go over some of the bad stuff first. West Virginia pressured the Pitt quarterback, Kelvin Slovis, 17 times the week before. 53% of his dropbacks, we were on him. But we only put eight pressures on this Daniels kid, 26% of the time versus Kansas. Now, maybe it's because of his speed. I don't know. But we weren't getting the pressure on him. Never got near him. We it. only had three tackles for loss the entire game We in were Kansas. not in their backfield. Uh, and, and Kansas ran the ball better. Against Pitt, West, we, also, we also ran the ball better ourselves. We ran the ball against Pitt. We averaged 5.8 yards per carry. We had 190 yards rushing. We only had 146 yards rushing against Kansas, and our average was 3.8 overall. We only had one run for more than 10 yards. That's our offensive line against their defensive line and our blocking against their linebackers. They, they, they matched us. They played at home, and they matched us. So but while I was ready to give our offensive line a pass and say they had a pretty good game, it really wasn't that good. On the other side of that, though, we put 42 points up on them, and we didn't score in overtime either. So the, the game wasn't lost because of our offense. In fact, kudos, JT Daniels threw for 350 yards. He threw two touchdowns. He threw a terrible interception. But we didn't play. We played well enough to win the game on offense. We did not even come close to playing well enough to win the game on defense. And special teams, other than uh, Reese Smith dropping the punt, wasn't terrible. You could still win the game with that. But the defense is the sore point. And that's what's so sad well, about this. Well, and let's talk about the defense because last week I was concerned that the defense wasn't tackling. This week <laughs> yeah. they were having trouble covering for the pass. I know we got youngsters and we've got transfers and the like, but and I, I, I'll give kudos to Jalen Daniels. He found He's the open ball man ball. and he yeah. ran around long enough until somebody got open and then he hit him, even in the rain. Jalen hit 62% of his passes. He averaged seven and a half yards per attempt. He had big throws on third down. He converted uh, seven of eight third down throws for 70 yards. And they Kansas converted 11 out of 15 third downs. That's a defense that's not saving you. You've got to stop them on third downs. Terry's correct. They were short third downs lots of times, but you've got to stop them on third downs. Converting 11 of 15 is breathtakingly good for an offense, and you didn't expect it out of Kansas. I, I you know, I, and, and I don't like pointing fingers, but we got a guy there on the defensive line that I touted a week or so ago as possibly an All-American. Where was he? Did he make a tackle in the game? Uh, you know, I, and the other side of that, and, and I think you heard some of that at the coach's press conferences, is if we can't keep their blockers off our linebackers, they can't make tackles either. And our linebackers didn't make tackles. Again, it's, 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 I think it's intensity. I, Let me I really come back do. to the offense because just like in the pit game, when it counted towards the end, that's when, the def that's when we were getting pressure on our quarterback. If you recall, in the pit game, we got sacked a couple of times when it counted. Yep. Well, when the they the Kansas came up with a pass rush when it counted twice in overtime, Kansas pressured J.T. Daniels, and that led to what could have been a fumble in the game ceiling interception. Right, right. Uh, so once again, we have got a break on that. You, 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 you've got to. You can't lay down on a play. Every single play counts now. Uh, their pass defense wasn't great, and I give a lot of credit to this game to Daniels. He threw for 355 yards at three touchdowns 
and one interception, and that was in overtime. And again, our offense put up 42 points. That should be enough to win a ball game. A Don Nalen team would never allow 55 points. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, but... Well. Uh, it, it, it boils down to this. Uh, we didn't play well enough on defense to win. That, that's really what it comes down to. We our offense did. Uh, what happened? I don't know. The, is Kansas's offensive line better than Pittsburgh's? I really don't think so. We got in on Slovis out most of the game. We could. We Pitt couldn't run it. But this team, granted, they were different in the way they attacked you with the options and stuff. But we knew what they were going to try to do. We just didn't execute. We didn't get it done. And and at some point in that game, you think somebody steps up and say, look, this has got to stop. They're running right through us. They're shredding us. Where, where does it happen? It never did. All right, they let me give did. you my rant now. It's really tempting to look at statistics and say Kansas period, over the years has loses this much and they can't win this much and West Virginia loses this much. And You have to remember these are not institutions. These are people. Right. And the people that lost two years ago were different kids in the same jersey with a different with a different coach in a different stadium with a different scheme. That has nothing to do with the kid that shows up today. And we saw that. We saw a quarterback that was good. We saw a, a Kansas offensive line that did a pretty good job in allowing them to run. We saw a, we saw a Kansas defensive line that did a pretty good job in stopping our run. They're, they're different kids. It's humans. Same with us. The West Virginia squad that played Pitt didn't show up against Kansas. Wasn't the same team. They can be there. Again, they're capable of it. They played good enough to win, but for a couple of mistakes. But if there's a... And by the way, I'll go back and mention that I, I said it was going to be a high-scoring yes, game. I said I was concerned about the secondary on both yes, of those teams. Did. And we said we didn't tackle very well against Pittsburgh. And didn't tackle and very well. And they needed to get that straight. I don't think any, I told you to take the over, by the way, and there was <laughs> over right. 100 points scored in this game. Uh, so you tuck that away. Actually, not quite, but 97. 97 but count? points. I'm That's a math right. they guy. Didn't really, I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. Well, let me crow a little bit. I said to you in the preview of the Kansas, you can go back and watch it, that I said, I don't know that they can come out and beat us straight up, but I said, we could give them this game. You and said. I feel that's, that, that's what happened. You right said here. that. Now, let me give the next look. Because it's about players and because it's about fans, I want to say this. There are, to Mountaineer fans, to the team, to the coaches, we're with you. We are. There's Absolutely. an awful lot of people out there that want to throw tantrums and want to pile on, and we're, we're, not, we're not doing we're that. Not when doing you, that when you're down, you, you get back up. This is not the bottom of the ninth. This isn't even late innings. This right. is very early. Exactly. And the only thing that can beat you is if you let the naysayers drag you down. Right. You're not alone. Uh, we're set up to make an amazing comeback. And if ever where there's a team that in West Virginia's history that could do that, this team could do that, but you got to play every play. When adversity hits, there's one of two ways you can go. When adversity hits, you either rally together and come out stronger, or you rally yourself and come out stronger, or you break apart, fall apart, and quit. I don't think this team's made up of a bunch that's going to quit. Um, think about the kinds of things that will help the program. Think about the kinds of things that will help the university and do those things. Yeah, we can play Kansas again in the Big 12 championship. All we have to do is beat everybody else. It's a possibility. Kansas could be there. Uh, I predict good things for this team. I think Kansas is a better team than a lot of people saw. Now, again... They, their quarterback could get a twisted ankle next week. They could and lose every next, game right, after that, and right. everybody could spit on us for right. having lost that's, to Kansas. That's exactly right. Uh, but, but if we play with the intensity we did against Pittsburgh, I think we can beat anybody in this conference. Uh, but we can't, let, we can't let the negative people drag us down. However, and I don't think we will. However, if we play like we did against Kansas... We could lose. Oh yeah, in this we, we've we've had so, that warning. The, and I think the point he's making, and and I'll make it uh, my point too, is that, is that it really doesn't do that good to be any good to be negative and just to call for the coach's head while the season's going on. It's not going to happen while the season's going on. It happened in Nebraska. Okay, well they got that, but that guy had been there six years. That's not going to happen. How about rally around the coach and a team when it's in this season ends? 
then have your say. Let's get Again, positive. This is about this is about our program. This is about our team. This is about our coaches. This is about fellow Mountaineer fans that are still for the team. You're not alone. We're there. We're saying it. We're not. We, we did bad things. We're not a bad team. We 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 lost the game. We're not a bad program. Even if you think the coach makes mistakes, and every week I think the coach uh, makes a mistake he someplace, <laughs> he's so, not too. a bad coach. He's a good coach. He may be one of the best coaches going. We've already run off two. The fans have run off two Hall of Fame coaches out of West Virginia. Uh, uh, we let's get on board. We're we're very lucky to be with this team this year, and let's use this as a slingshot effect to come back and win five or six straight. And then shut these people up. Bottom line is, I, we never expected to lose to Kansas, but we did. Now, what are you going to do from here on out? We'll see you next week about with a preview of Towson. That'll be later this week, actually. Yes. Yes. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Thank you.